Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Sailor Moon Another Story playthrough, in which Sailor Venus is in a mad dash to figure out how to cure these uh, obnoxious people who were turned to stone. How to unstone them. You know, maybe... Artemis, maybe we should just, like, split. <laughs> call, call this one a loss? Uh, I don't know. Yes, maybe some merry band of thieves will have some super soft on the way back. <laughs> Whatever quest they're doing. So, yeah. Appointment. You don't need to try as hard to level up on time as Venus, but... I still recommend at least, like, going to the effort of fighting a few battles if you have the Grind Be Gone mod on, because Venus is not particularly strong, and the random battles inside the, um, inside the first of the two mini-dungeons in this chapter will give you a lot of trouble. Assuming you run into them. <laughs> Which might not actually happen. Depending. Oh no. You got an herb ball pack. <laughs> the slightly annoying thing is that you don't get too many experience points from the enemies out here in the mountain path, but like you get plenty of experience points from the random enemies inside the keep who will kill you in one or two shots. So. You gotta make use of your defense accessories uh, for that, but mm -hmm. it's it's probably the best way to get experience points quickly, regardless of how low the, the uh, encounter rate is. This castle up here is where the enemies I'm talking about are, but we can't enter it yet. It's so weird though. We're like, we're in Turkey and we have all these brown village huts. And then just like in the middle of this cave is a medieval ass castle. <laughs> yeah. Like... Okay. <laughs> I thought like we'd we'd encounter a, a vampire or something in there. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But oh. And they all know who you are without having to ask, because, well, you'll see. Even ye, old, even ye olden days, the Sailor Scouts wore these little weird outfits that don't match anything else. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of interesting that, like, even in the, their past lives, their, their transformations were, like, sailor uniforms, even though the overall like aesthetic of the silver millennium was very fantasy medieval doesn't make a whole lot of sense but whatever yeah they could have done uh, the author could have done something more like medieval regal kind of thing with them and then just like oh because they're in modern times this is what their yeah. magical garb looks like now or something yeah I think they would have fit better but eh. yeah yeah I think so <laughs> I mean, it's not even as if they're it's it's not even as if the story doesn't already play with there being differences between what their powers are in the modern day and what their powers were in their past life. There was no Sailor Moon in the Silver Millennium. Usagi's past life really was just as a princess who mm -hmm. couldn't fight. But um Oh well, it's easy to it's easy to think about these things retroactively. You can talk to all these NPCs, and they can tell you exactly what's going down with with, with the, the village chiefess knowing you're coming. And Venus will still act totally surprised when she walks into Verna's hut, and Verna knows her and is expecting her. <laughs> huh? How do you know who I am? Uh, you, you just talked to someone outside who explained this to you. <laughs> Were you just not paying attention? Oh, well. Anyway, there is a reason that they know who Venus is, and we're about to see that reason with our eyes. There was a Kunzite statue in the temple of the other village, which was entirely made of men. 
Now we are walking into a temple in a village made entirely of women. So of course there's a statue of Venus here. And it's going to be only placed in a pool so no one can disturb it and cause another curse here. <laughs> the interesting thing about this statue is it looks like she's wielding a sword, which I think is a manga thing. Um, Venus, I think, gets to be the one who stabs Beryl through the chest with her sword. <laughs> Uh, in Crystal, that role winds up going to Osagi instead, but, mm -hmm. you know. It's, it's such a sparkly statue. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a nice fountain statue combo. Yeah, and it's probably even, it's probably even attached to the statue so that no one can accidentally nudge it. Yeah, no nudging. I, I, I bet Venus was even nice enough not to curse it so that if it, if it got bumped slightly, it wouldn't turn the villagers to stone. Wait, hang on. I, I just, like, realized something. Okay, the, the Kunzai statue turns people to stone. The Venus statue is in a fountain full of water. There's a, there's a thing there. There's a joke to be made. But it's not coming to me. Um. Hmm. Yeah, I got nothing either. <laughs> I mean, she's definitely not cursing anybody, so. I think that just flew over everyone's heads, but oh well. Okay. We're sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the people in the comments are immature enough to get it. Anyway, there's a back room to this temple. It serves no purpose. <laughs> it's just a throne room that no one ever sits in. Wait, are you saying that her her statue makes people wet? Hey, there we go. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's better than anything we came up with, so. Which was a fat load of nothing, so. <laughs> okay. I, I, mean, I mean, that is what I was implying. <laughs> I even made a little pun there, but it just flew over your heads, so, you know. Uh. Okay, so like, we're done here. That's talking to the chief, talking to the chiefess and seeing the statue is literally all you need to do in this village. It does serve as a place that you can use the inn and item shop if 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 the if you want because, yeah, but like, other than that, there's nothing to really do here. It's a good thing that they sell Japanese-style boxed lunches in this ancient un underground village in Turkey. And well, they, they have Japanese-style bo Japanese boxed lunches and American jelly-filled donuts. Like in the shop. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and they accept yen as a currency, because of course. Of course, the, you know. Is Turkey part of the EU? Would they use euros, or are they technically different? I'm not sure. I have no idea. Yeah, I'm not sure if they're part of the EU or not. Someone in the comments will probably tell us, though. I don't know a whole lot about the countries over in the general European area. Well, there's one, lots of them, and two. It's just kind of hard to tell once you get really far Eastern Europe as to what's in the EU or not. Unless you're, like, actively living over there, so you probably have more of a reason to know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure it is part of Europe. I thought there would at least be something to find in the chiefess's house in the way of treasure because it looked so important, but no, there's not even an item hidden in one of the pots. Anyway, I saved and reloaded from this save spot a couple of times because I was taken off guard by how quickly you die to the random battles in the keep. <laughs> <laughs> um, it really is like surprisingly off-putting how quickly this game slides from being brain dead easy to being actually quite punishing <laughs> um to the point where once i start playing as sailor moon again and the dif difficulty evens out to what i would expect it to be i, I kind of breathed an audible sigh of relief and i'm like ah okay the game finally found its balance um of course, it helps that when you're playing in Sailor Moon, you start to get other party members following mm -hmm. you around because Sailor Moon has Sailor Saturn and Uranus and Neptune and Chibi Moon all with her in that location. 
and Chibi Moon doesn't have to spend half as half as much time alone fighting enemies before she rejoins Sailor Moon. So, what could have been a better idea is to just coalesce the individual stories and just pair them up instead. Maybe, but I actually I like. Was, I was, obviously, you have to rewrite things, but just as far as gameplay goes, to bounce it out a little bit better. Maybe, but I actually like the idea of having single character prologues. Yeah, you see how fast that killed me. Ouch. Oof. Although that it that that does bring me to to um, one cool thing that I like about this game is that when you do die, you just instantly reappear at the last place you saved your game, rather than being booted back to the title screen and having to do that yourself. That is so, nice. So you know, okay. there's like no load times or anything. You just poof back to where you were. Well, I hope there'd be no load times. This is a Super Famicom game. <laughs> just most RPGs would boot you back to the title screen. They'd give you a long game over with sad music, piano music playing in the background. And then you, you have died. to go through the load game screen and then pick your save slot and then load to where you used to be. I mean, better than SMT5 where it's like you de you defuse the thing. Your Demi Fiend gives you a disappointed look like you done fucked up. It's like, but it wasn't my fault. He did two crits on me in a row. There was something I could do about that. <laughs> Two crits. I, I yeah. saw a video where they did three. <laughs> well, because there's a there's a crit only mode, but because it's you, bosses are usually one thing versus your party. They don't always. They usually are good enough to not target your main character twice. Which is it's one of those games where if your main party member dot your main party lead dies, it's just an instant game over. Even if you have like a full party. Yeah. So it's just like one of those. If the game just decides to pick on Naho, it's like, nope, sorry, screw you. Try again. <laughs> Anyway, I did do some si significant grinding against those enemies. It turns out that the effective strategy in this case is to just use your strongest single target spell twice rather than trying to target both of them with an area of effect attack. So, um, yeah. yeah, getting cutting the damage output on your enemies by half is usually a good idea. Mm -hmm. It's the first time this game demands that you use that strategy, though, so it's a bit so it, so it kind of throws you for a loop. But anyway, boss time. It's a ghost? I thought so too, but it's not. Venus thinks it is. <laughs> I mean, it's all evil and spooky <laughs> and white. Venus, you can shoot lasers out of your fingertips. You'll be fine. Oh no, it's a random Naga. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly Lamia. <laughs> but like... <Yeah. laughs> I do kind of like that, like, we get to hear the the voice clips shouting out all the attacks. But unfortunately, the battle system is not very diverse. It doesn't really encourage you to use different attacks. In general, it's better to just... Use, use the one that works. Spam yeah. the one attack. Spam the one attack that's strongest for whatever purpose that you need. Your strongest mm -hmm. multi-target or your strongest single target or your strongest link attack that does one of the two, whichever. Funny thing that I didn't discover until I was playing as Sailor Moon again, but like if two of your party members have a link attack together, you can select that link attack twice in the same turn as both of the characters. So you can have um, the Chibi Moons, the, Ch the Chibi Moon Sailor Moon duo do their special team attack twice every turn. <laughs> it's kind of <sighs> funny. Most games with um, like team attacks would count the one team attack as the character action for both characters and you would only do it once but uh that's not the case here it's very strange this boss is also doing like just enough damage to be troublesome like i have to recover my action points and then i have to recover my hp mm. <laughs> so i wind up spending great long periods of time just not actually doing anything. <laughs> Sailor Venus is an odd duck among the Sailor Scouts in that, like, her element is heart. It's like she literally has yeah. the planet. She literally has the planeteer element of heart compared to everyone else who has, like, earth, fire, wind, and water. Mm -hmm. Um, and the Captain Planet. <laughs> and the only other Sailor Scout in the solar system who has, like, 
another like non-elemental element as their power is Sailor Saturn, whose element is death. <laughs> so, um, kind, it kind of well. Now that I think about it, what is Sailor Pluto's like regular method of attack when she's not freezing time or something? I don't know. Uh, I mean, she's not really allowed to leave. Well, Pluto does end up fighting with the other Sailor Scouts starting yeah. from starting from season three. She basically just reincarnates in the present day. Like she literally dies in re in one arc, mm -hmm. and then and then in the next arc, you find out that she's already reincarnated and grown into an adult off screen somewhere else because that's how time travel works. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but I forget what Sailor Pluto's attacks were. I mean, in an odd way, it makes sense considering Veronica Taylor's the only actress who is in both versions of the dub. Oh, really? Interesting. Yeah, she was just a general background character in. Due to general background characters in the Deke dub, but she was technically there, and she's Sailor Pluto now, so. <laughs> uh, that's nice. I like how Sage, whatever her name is, just looks like a regular townsfolk NPC here. Um, like, there's nothing special about her sprite at all. <laughs> she kind of looks like Ami, honestly. Yeah. Like, like, maybe that dress is supposed to be a robe, but the detail is so low that I can't really tell the difference. But yeah, she's the one who delivers the exposition regarding the regarding the the curse with Lord Kunzite and what their past was Ooh, with each yeah. other. And it's so weird because <laughs> like Venus is the only one who learns this. <laughs> um, the other two, the the other three, all went to retrieve the stones of their past life lover, and they just sort of pass this by without knowing about it. Mars encounters. Jadeite and someone who looks like Jadeite and there's a bit of an emotional connection there but it's never expanded on uh, but other than that it's like <laughs> wow okay we're bringing this all up at the very end of this chapter okay <laughs> I can shoot lasers but I don't know about holy light <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think that was the holy light, Venus. <laughs> I guess we're gonna shoot the we're gonna shoot something with our beam. Yay! Of course, the real reason Venus is kind of the odd the odd duck of the bunch is because she was designed originally to be a standalone protagonist. So all f all, all three of the others were designed around elements because they were meant to complement a protagonist, but Venus is just like. A main character, so she had her own like standalone attacks. But you know, in some ways, those weird oddities give the story some strange quantity of texture. You know, In any case, we now need to go unstone all the stone guys. Yeah, they went to they they all gathered they they all got together one night for a party and got stoned. Um, <laughs> have some water, have some bread, get yourself sober. <laughs> uh, okay. Gosh, this village is way too big. Let's do what we came here to do. Let's go beam them. And after this, we're pretty much just going to peace out because we already know where the exit is now. Yay. In fact, the only thing stopping us from leaving immediately is the fact that two stone statue... Uh, two people got turned to stone, like, right in front of the exit. Mm -hmm. So... What? <laughs> Didn't you learn your lesson last time? <laughs> I like how the sprite has all these hairs out of place. Uh, is this our boss? They do a pretty good job at capturing... No, but it's just time to see. <laughs> they do a good job at capturing the animation anagans of the series in this game. And I think it fit. It flows better with this game simply because the the game does mm -hmm. have like an ongoing narrative, instead of being a monster of the week story. But mm -hmm. 
Nah, that was easy. Wait, no, it wasn't. I'm down to 30 HP. How did that happen? <laughs> <laughs> I remember playing that and I was like, I, I was like, oh God, this is going to be one of those battles. I'm going to have to reset again, aren't I? Beam him. I was kidding <laughs> that. <laughs> you don't need to tell me twice. <laughs> All right. You know what's interesting about this sequence is that if you check one of the stone statue individuals, Artemis says it looked like it looks like the stone's starting to melt. It's interesting that they actually described the process of unpetrification. Huh. And it's like there are a lot of games where petrification plays a part. There's a lot of places mm -hmm. games where petrification plays a part in the oh. story. You like Final they... Fantasy IX, for example, but like this is the first time I've seen an RPG actually like describe what it's like to turn back from being stone. So that's They're not stoned anymore. Excellent. And oh no. <laughs> we, we... You saved us. We should have escaped while the while the escaping <laughs> was escapable. Um Oh no. It's going to happen again. Uh oh. For your perfect lips. <laughs> <laughs> A manicure? Hey! Yep. Uh my radiant neck. <laughs> okay, the the cologne I get, but why why do you guys have lipstick and manicures? I mean, when you're a village of nothing but guys, you yeah, gotta you gotta make sometime. you gotta make do you gotta make some compromises. <laughs> if you talk to this guy later, he's like, "You accepted everyone else's gifts. Why didn't you accept mine?" <laughs> oh. Well, fine. What did you have? Uh, my $20 gift card to get Best Buy. Damn. <laughs> All right. Well. Mm. It's so weird that they made this guy look so cool and handsome, and then he's you, like, talk to him twice, and then you leave. He gives you a, a, a Reass Topaz. I forget what that does. I think it might be um, a recovery item. Not sure, though. <clears throat> Shut up, Johnny Young Boss. <laughs> if we're all done, we should. Uh, oh, Jesus. Johnny Young Boss, don't you have some place to brood? <laughs> you know, Minako enjoying the moment purely because it was a moment and not actually thinking beyond that. And complaining that the moment was ruined rather than actually caring about Darcy is probably the most Minako thing that she's done so far. But it turns out that Darcy knows, like, who Sailor Venus is and also knows where you can leave the village. There's a magic spaceship hidden in a, ca hidden in a cave nearby that used to belong to Venus back in the good old days. Oh... It was the way she, it, it was the device that she used to transport herself back, back and forth between the moon and Kunzite's little hideaway here. So, like... Oh no, wait, hold on. This is a, this is an actual song. Not like a Sailor Moon song, but like, there's parts of this that are like literally just a song from the time period. Is this one of those, like, mother things where they just took a song from somewhere else and just used it? Possibly. <laughs> I don't recognize it, so I'm, I'm, I'm lacking context for that. I'd have to look up the name of it, but I know I recognize it, so. And again, they might have actually just gotten permission to use it. Who knows? Uh, who, yeah. Sailor Moon was a fairly uh, popular property, and this game was made, like... 
either after season three or during season three's run. So the show was well established at the mm -hmm. time. I'm not sure if it was after season three or during season three's run because like the way this game treats the third arc seems to align more with the manga than the anime. Even though the rest of the game aligns with the anime. Like, in the anime, I'm pretty sure Hutaru's dad lives, but he's treated as having died here. 